Welcome to How to Draw Friday. Last time we drew a sort of a cartoon snake. This time we're going to try and draw it just a slight little bit realistic. Now, it's when you got a cartoon, something that's half cartoon and half illustration, I guess you call it an illustration. But I hope you enjoy this. A little bit more advanced than the last one, but not too much advanced. Enjoy. Bit of the business now with the pencil. I am scribbling around a bit of an oval shape here, a nice slight angle, not that important. Just sort of roughly put this in. It's a great thing about organic shapes, they don't have to be perfect. There you go, another wavy line there. I do a fair bit with pencil. This is going to be where the eye is going to be, just under there, like that, half circle there. In a bit, and here the scale above the eye that protects the eye as it goes through the grass. Little dip there. So I'm just sort of marking in some of the features now. Down there's a cross. Make sure that dips there, that's where the tongue comes out. This is going to be a snake with its tongue poking out. Top of the mouth. See, it's getting very snake-like. Is this a generic snake? It could be a king snake, could be a tree snake, could be a leopard, could be a tiger snake. Yeah. See, I'm just, you know, putting in the... I'm just sort of making this up out of my head. But two big solar panels there. It's common to so many ground snakes. And from here, I'm just drawing a line. That's going to be the back bone or the back row of scales. And here's another line. Basically putting lines like this. These are our guidelines as to where the scales are going to be. And up the top here I'm going to do a few more above here. They're going to be half as thick. So they get more narrow. Okay, a bit rough around the edges. Like I say, this is a very generic ground snake. Here I'm going to do some like little bricks, and they're going to sort of curve according to the curve of the snake. You sort of you can put guidelines like this if you like. And see how they sort of fan out that way, and then fan down that way. So this is a bit like doing a brick wall, you just miss a row and then you put the next brick in place, like so. And if you can get this brick wall shape right, you should get the scales pretty much in the right place. Today's drawing is still a fairly simplistic drawing, I am just drawing it straight out of my head. I'm not fussing too much. I'm going to go over this with a big thick marker pen. You can see at the top here the bricks are a bit more narrow to give it a little bit more of a wraparound effect. But if you use the brick wall effect you'll always get the scale sort of looking right. You go even more detailed you could sort of make every one of those bricks a really perfect scale if you wanted to spend hours on this but I'm rushing through this one rather quickly. Alright, back to the face. Some big scales coming from the eye down to the mouth. So the, the, the snakes usually have large scales above their top lip and bottom lip and these tend to fold in around the eyes, making the eye a bit of a feature. So a little shield shape here it's the way we identify some snakes. Sometimes it's thin, sometimes it's quite thick. And the other eye one there sort of helps give the shape of the head that the uh, scales above the eyes there. That's where the tongue's going to come out. The 
tend to scribble when I actually draw myself I tend to scribble a bit but used to cartooning I sort of scribble because I'll just rub all these lines out Probably don't make those bottom lip scales match up with the top ones, so put them a little bit off kilter a bit. Again, like brickwork. As you can see here, we're replacing every one of these bricks with a rounded scale. Now, depending on the snake, sometimes these will be an oval shape, sometimes they'll be more of a diamond shape. They end up having a sort of an elongated honeycomb effect. So I'm still trying to keep this a fairly simple drawing. If you have just got like a little bit of drawing experience, you should be able to get through this. Or some of my other how-to draw ones are for people who don't draw at all or uh, they're just beginners. This one's probably just above a beginner's. But if you've been drawing for years, you might pick up a few little hints on this as well few little tricks. Us artists tend to sort of be very much loners and we tend to draw for many years by ourselves. Here comes the marker pen. Yeah, I'm going to start off with the eye. I often start off with the eye because if you stuff up the eye you can throw away the paper and you know start again whereas if you do everything and then you stuff up the eye you sort of get a bit more aggro. Now watch here, see how I don't make the scales go all the way down? I'm just sort of really marking in bits. You'll find there's actually a little slight gap between the scales. Nice heavy outline for the mouth. And I'll probably get there and mostly mark in the corners and the shadows that the scales form. If I had a finer pen, I might put a bit more detail in, but uh, I'm not planning to put in a really detailed drawing at this stage. So here I'm doing, I'm just shading in, or just marking in rather, the line underneath each scale. It's like the shadow of each scale. We've got two big solar panel like scales at the top there. Okay, just sort of getting those corners, leaving a little gaps here and there. For the sake of realism, sometimes you've got to leave gaps. It sort of makes a illustration much more realistic if you do. Now a lot of people who love putting in lots and lots of detail often forget how important white is. White is very important in an illustration because you put too much detail in the whole thing just tends to look like a mess. So the more skilled artists they uh, really know how to use white And in this, I'm thinking about white as much I, as I am thinking about where I'm putting all the black. Marking in scales can take a long time. I always recommend putting on an audio book. It's much better than music to listen to because you really get involved in an audio book while you're doing this sort of what I call drone work. Just slowly, scale by scale, putting in detail. So if you're one of those people who love to put in lots of details, yeah, I suggest start listening to audiobooks. It'll keep you there a lot longer. You'll get a lot more work done. Okay. A few more details. 
recently just listened to Sherlock Holmes, that was good. And Tarzan and the Apes are very good. There's a few good audio books for you. You can see what I'm doing, just the just basically the shadows of the scales. Here's where it gets really tricky, especially with a big thick marker pen. You just gotta have a very gentle touch. Or, like I say, you just try and get yourself a finer tipped marker pen. That would be a good idea too. We're getting there, it's almost finished. Stick with me, hope this video is not too long and boring. Mark in the tongue. And then, shading is quite important too. So, I'm putting a couple of lines there getting darker. There's shading going into the mouth. I'm going to put some shading under the, well, under the chin here. So copying the shape of the lower jaw. Making it nice and thick. I'll do a line here, just a couple of dots here, or strokes, going into there. And it's, because the tongue's not very big, it's not casting a great shadow, but it gives more weight to the head and makes the tongue look lighter. Shadows going from here to here. Just a bunch of lines. Yeah, sort of actually going to thicken up. See where the uh, shadow comes closest to the body, we really thicken that up and as the body goes away we make it a bit lighter. Now this again gives weight to the body. It makes one part of the body look lighter, it makes another part of the body look heavier. So the bits that are resting on the ground gives them a bit of weight, makes them look like they're heavier. Now just a few more details, we're almost done. When we're looking at, uh, well, let's get the rubber first. It's going to rub out all the lines and see what we've got left, and then we might put in some finer details. I usually use a nib and brushes. I don't normally use a big thick marker pen, and so I usually have to wait a while before I can actually do all the rubbing out. So, good thing about marker pens, you rub out straight away. Go, get all those pencil lines out. There's back to the marker. And I might just put in one or two little details that are missing. So the great thing about rubbing it out, you can see what's missing. These solar panels, very, very gentle. Just gonna put a little bit of shade, but also notice I am leaving white bits. Because these scales are shiny, so you have to leave a few white bits as well. Bit of shade around there. So not too much detail. It's tempting just to put lots of detail in. It's better not to put too much. Uh, a little bit around here. If you have to put in detail, put it in in the shady bits. Go make sure there are bits that are left white. So a bit of shade under this bottom lip. Which I'm just doing a few dots along there and probably just under the neck there. I'll show you along under the neck here because uh, again it just gives the animal a bit of weight where it should have a bit of weight. And uh, there you go, there's our snake illustration. Nice black and white illustration probably ready for a bit of watercolour or you could go over it in pencil and shade it or you can go with coloured pencils it's all different ways of getting colour, you can scan it put it in a computer. There, I hope that wasn't too hard 